Hello everyone, uh, my name is Nico Gaudenzi and today I want to share with you a new library which I think some of you may find interesting. Uh, it's called SOHI which stands for Scriptable Object Hierarchy and the idea is to be able to edit hierarchy for data in the same way that you work with the hierarchy for game objects. So uh, I'll make two videos about this. In the first video I'll just show some of the functionality and the things it can do. And in the second video I will go through the, through the code and how it's structured. And I'll be releasing the library as an open source project and you can get it in my GitHub uh, place and the link will be down there. And so without further ado, let me show you what uh, Sohi is about. So Sohi is made of two types of things, trees and nodes. So I'm going to create a tree by going right click and then create Sohi tree, which creates a scriptable object. And I'll just call it tree. And then to inspect this tree, I will add to the Sohi container I will add a script called container and it just accepts one tree, one Sohi tree. So I will drag and drop this one here and it allows me to create a new root for this tree. So when I click new root, you can see that now the scriptable object here has a child node called root. Perfect. Now I will create nodes so I can put them in my tree. I will create two nodes. Mm -hmm. And then I can simply drag and drop the node on top of the root and it creates it as a child. And I can grab the other node and drop it there and I have them there. And I can also add them not as, well, I can add this node as a child of this node or I can add it as a sibling of the node and I can rearrange them and I can also delete them. And um, it's interesting that when you interact with the, with the tree in the inspector, the nodes are, are correctly added, but they haven't changed in the serialized copy of the scriptable object. So if I just click on save tree, it will create those nodes and it will serialize them so that they will be stored correctly even if I close the program or if I run the, the engine. And um, that's also true when I delete nodes. If I delete them here, nothing has changed here, but once I save the tree, it gets updated correctly. And so far, you can only add nodes and um, uh, rearrange them here, which is cool, but it's not very useful. Now, the, the interesting thing is this, that scriptable objects can hold the information that you can later use. For example, I'm going to create an example node, which is called my node. And if I add this node to my... Um, tree. Now it's part of, of the tree. So I want to inspect what's inside my node. For this I will add a new tab with a new inspector and I will put it down here. Notice that this one is locked so that it always shows what the Sohi container has and this one is free so that it shows what I have currently selected. And I can select the nodes here and it shows it shows what they have inside. The root node has nothing, but this my node now uh, has a string and has a button. So you can store um, data, but you can also store methods inside the, the trees. And I can click on, on the button and it, it's just a method that uh, writes to the console. But the idea is that you can use this to store all sorts of tree-like structures such as um, dialogue trees or um, 
containment information such as these cities in this country and within the city you have these places and within the places you have these rooms and etc etc um, so and for example this my node which interacts perfectly with the sohi tree but it's different from these nodes it's very easy to implement let me show you the code for a second this is the code for my node and it's just a scriptable object that inherits from the hexiled Sohi, I'm using that namespace, and the node component. And then I simply have a public string and a public method. And then I created a uh, custom editor where I defined a, a button that simply calls the method on the scriptable object. So it's, it's very simple to, to design your own nodes and use them in the way you feel like. Um, finally, uh, to see how far you can push this idea of holding methods inside the nodes, I created a tool which I want to show you, but it's in a different project. So I'll just load the other project and I'll be right back. Thanks. And we're back. And the tool I want to show you, it's an implementation of artificial intelligence behavior trees using Sohi as its sort of front end, and then defining a bunch of nodes with different functionalities so that you can uh, have artificial intelligence. This is not included in the open source library, but it's actually an asset that you can find in the asset store. And there's a link in the description. And um, I've implemented here a simple play tag behavior tree which um, it's put on top of the white uh, cube and the green cube it's only following my mouse and you can see that we're watching the the behavior tree of the white cube and it's currently chasing me so it sets a um, it takes the direction of the player and it, then it moves towards that direction and when it gets there it does it again and tries to to follow the last place I was standing. But then if I touch it, it changes its behavior and, it, and tries to avoid the green cube. And now you can see that the avoid it's running. And then because the player is not near the white cube, it just sits there idly. But if I come close to it, it turns its avoid behavior again. And if I touch it, it starts chasing me again. So um, this is the kind of thing that you can do using Sohi. And it's just a matter of defining the, the nodes that you'll be using in your, in your tree. In the second part of these videos, I will show a little bit of the code and how you, how, how you can implement your own structures and trees. And I think it could be useful, even if this tool is not exactly what you need. It gives a good example of how to implement drag and drop and that sort of thing, which is not so well implemented in the Unity documentation. So um, I'm releasing it also because I, can th I, I think it can help and it can work as a, as a good example of how to implement these things. So I hope you like it, uh, you can use it, it's absolutely open, and um, yeah, that would be it. If you're interested in the code, see you in the next video. Thank you, bye.